Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, and the reason why I have this massive, confusing background of logos present, uh, is today I want to go through and break down what the modern data stack actually means. Um, it's a term that gets thrown around a lot, especially if you're going to big data conferences. Everyone's talking about how they are a key part of the modern data stack. Um, and you know, it's because it is such a compelling narrative is, hey, you know, everyone wants to have that modern data stack stay on the cutting edge, have all enterprise grade technologies, have it all work together seamlessly in that kind of full stack tooling. Um, and so today I'm going to break down kind of what I think are the seven steps of the modern data stack. Um, and so I'll kind of just run through them really quickly on what I kind of think the seven categories are, and then we'll dive into each of them individually and talk about kind of why I think they're, you know, a critical part in some of the example technologies for each. Um, and if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot, but enough begging for my supper, um, now into the fun stuff. Um, so the first category, uh, it's kind of defined here under uh, sources, um, is data collection and ingestion. Um, so obviously all data starting with a point of someone entering data, whether it's you know, a customer start entering a data point in a system, collecting that, um, and then integrating in your backend. Then you have your data storage, where that data will eventually be stored. And you can see that kind of after ingestion um, there, where you're going to have your Snowflakes, your Postgres databases, your SQL, whatever kind of database you're using, this is typically where it is. Then what isn't shown in here is you'll have some data processing and transformation tools as well. Um, so you're going to be, you know, after you've taken that raw data, you've stored it, you're probably going to be processing it, making sure um, it's in a defined format and fits your schema um, before eventually querying it, um, doing data analysis, uh, business intelligence. You can see down here some of those example tools, bringing it in Tableau, maybe a lightweight Streamlit app, um, different ways to visualize it and serve that data and the insights from it to actual end users. Um, and then you know, what a lot of people at the top of everyone mind and apologies, you're also going to typically be looking at some kind of machine learning platforms as well. Nowadays, um, especially, you know, if your boss it loves going on LinkedIn and reading about machine learning, uh, you're probably going to be, and also, I mean, you should be, I, I mean, I joke, but machine learning is great. It's, you know, basically just advanced statistics, right? Um, and then kind of managing all of this, you have systems like uh, Airflow, my favorite, uh, running data operations, uh, running orchestration across your entire pipeline, um, and even running ML ops in, in a lot of situations as well. Airflow is kind of has, has emerged as a really great uh, tool for ML ops. You can see this up in the workflow orchestration section. Um, and then just kind of embedded throughout the whole stage, you're also going to make sure you want to have, you know, security and data governance built in uh, to your pipelines to make sure that, hey, you know, and data quality as well, um, to make sure that your data that you're ingesting isn't some garbage and your data source got corrupted. Um, so now that you kind of an overview of what I think of the seven layers, let's go step by step and just kind of look at each layer individually. So I thought this graphic was actually really good to start from Airbyte, um, which is, hey, you know, here are your many different sources that you're going to be pulling from, common APIs like Facebook, like Salesforce, like Stripe, GitHub, et cetera. Um, but then you also might have some long tail, maybe some specific applications that are unique to, you know, your uh, business that you need to pull from as well. Um, maybe you have databases, files that you need to collect from that are storing intermediary, you know, maybe storing your transaction data. And then it's getting batch transferred into your backend data warehouse. Um, then on the other side, so that's kind of the data collection engine. And so for this, you're going to maybe using things like Apache Kafka to say, hey, you know, a new message is available. If you want to have you message based, uh, you might be doing, you know, using something like Fivetran to query your APIs or uh, who's that guy that has, uh, there's one guy on, on, one sec. There's Ethan Aaron and his big portable. I mean, they have a bunch of long tail uh, ETL connectors. So I think they just custom make a lot of those. Um, and overall, just going to be a lot of different, I mean, it really depends on what you're using, but you're going to be having something, I mean, typically Airflow, honestly, managing the ingestion of those services, maybe Python scripts, collecting it, integrating into your backend system to bring us to our second step, which is storage. So even before you're doing your transformations, especially now that transformation in a data warehouse is so cheap uh, in you know, warehouses like Snowflake, um, you're going to bring your data from those ingestion sources, store it in your, you know, maybe intermediary table before you do some data processing and transformations um, to conform it to your uh, to your standards, to your particular needs. Um, and 
you're still going to have kind of the data storage as the first step um, that all your future data processing is based off of because you're not going to be able to do large scale processing just based directly off of an API endpoint, right? Um, so having that storage, you know, even if it's an S3 container, just a storage file before they're all, you know, batch uploaded, um, you're going to be going, you know, from collection to storage. Uh, then after that, we'll go to our third stage, which is data processing and transformation, that third layer in the modern data stack. And so even though this black bar on the screen looks really ugly, I know, um, I did think this is a really cool graphic uh, because it does show you kind of the diversity in how different companies are doing their data processing. Um, so at kind of the top end, you have services like AWS Glue, which are hourly rates to, you know, process your data and you'll know, define, you know, the steps that it's going, those, that data is going to be processed in um, within Glue. You'll have Azure Stream Analytics, similar process as well. You know, as your data comes in, it goes through steps that you define. Um, and again, Google Cloudflow, they all have some more services that will, you know, process your data in whatever structure you format um, for, you know, for a fee, right? Obviously it's, you know, cloud, it's billing. Um, but then you also have services like Spark, like Apache Flink, like S Storm. Um, I would say Spark is, is probably the biggest one for big data transformation. Um, that's what Databricks is, is just a managed Spark. Um, and so that's where you have companies like Netflix, Uber that are using that. Um, and there it's a lot more, you, know, you have to manage your own cluster. Um, you have a lot of configuration that you can uh, do to, you know, optimize your transformations. Uh, versus the other ones are a little bit less configurable, um, but the trade-off there is, you know, they're, they're a lot easier to manage as well. Um, so now we've kind of, you've got our transformed data. We're at the fourth layer of the modern data stack where we can look at some data analysis and BI tools. And so on the data analysis and BI side of things, you know, this is really the heart of the modern data stack. Um, extracting the meaningful insights from data is what's going to actually drive business decisions. It's what's going to, you know, help you use data to actually help your business rather than just, you know, yelling into a void, right? Um, and so this is where you have tools like Power BI, like Tableau, like Looker, SciSense, uh, that have interfaces that allow you to, you know, structure queries to maybe on a daily basis query, uh, you know, or update a dashboard based on, you know, a data set that you're producing from your data processing and transformation steps. Um, and again, this, you know, Airflow is kind of encompassing the entire stack here. Um, and these have basically the ability to, you know, do as any database queries you would need to do, but in the service of creating dashboards and then also have tooling to create really beautiful visualizations and then they, uh, tooling to serve those to your end users. Um, and, you know, this is really where, you know, you can generate some real dollar impact by having, you know, your reports that have are really easily readable for your end business users. Um, and so kind of building off of the BI tools and the fifth step, uh, more, I would say more recent addition to the modern data stack um, is the realm of machine learning. And so since A16Z always likes to be a thought leader uh, in this space, I thought I would just use kind of their AI reference guide here. Uh, where you can see a lot of the same tools I already mentioned just coming together with also some new tools like a model registry, maybe something like MLflow, SageMaker, um, Hugging Face for sentiment analysis. Um, you know, you're still using things like Spark to do your data transformations, but then you're building in a model registry that's, you know, running those models as well in your Spark clusters, making use of that to compute. Um, or you're using dedicated GPUs if you're really going uh, all the way. Um, you also have distributed processing, you know, maybe Airflow as the center of your AI stack. Um, you know, plugging into things like OpenAI, Cohere, uh, really just a whole lot of tools working together um, to power machine learning and advanced analytics. Um, and so using some of these reference architectures to help incorporate them into your own modern data stack, it's really helpful because otherwise, you know, it, it's tough to know where to actually start. Um, and so, now we're at the fifth, so that's the fifth level. I'd say that's the deepest level of the modern data stack. And I'd say, I think the next two are really kind of all encompassing, which are data operations and orchestration and data governance and quality. So let's go into some of the data operations and orchestration tools and why they're important.
all the different steps of the modern data stack that I really wanted to talk about today. Um, so I hope you found this video useful. I hope you gained some value out of it. Um, if you disagree with any of my points, please let me know in the comments. Uh, and if you didn't like this video and like something else, let me know what that other video is and I'll make it for you. Um, so above all else, have a good one. Data guy out.